Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So quite a few of you sent me the same Instagram post and it contained this photo right here. So this was quite an alarming photo for me. Caught me by surprise. I've dug into it to see what's true, what's not, because there's a lot of craziness in this. So in this one, we're gonna talk about digital driver's licenses. Are they coming to your state? Are you getting it? What's included? What kind of data are they tracking? Where's this headed? Let's find out. Let's dig into it. Okay guys, let's dive into this and take a look. Let's first take a look at what is a digital driver's license. We're gonna run over here to a Washington Post article. Uh, yeah, my light died, sorry about that. It's a Monday, it's how things are going. Anyway, this Washington Post article does a decent job of summarizing what a digital driver's license is. So it's a non-physical version of a common form of state identification. Basically, it's an ID that lives on your phone. It looks a lot like this, a lot like your regular driver's license. You can see it's got an ID, it's got your date of birth, address, just about everything you find on your driver's license. In addition, it's also got a QR code. Um, it's tied into the Near Field Communication Chip, or NFC, that most of your phones have these days. And then it also ties into your Bluetooth. So basically you have three different ways to communicate the data to whoever it is that you're trying to talk to. Um, and in this example, they cite a restaurant, an airport, and a liquor store. So clearly they're trying to track your booze and where you're traveling to and from. Now, one of the, one of the things about the photo, it's not just a stagnant photo like it is on your driver's license. So you actually take three separate photos of yourself at different angles. So when you turn the phone like this, you kind of turn within the app itself. So it's a bit more dynamic. That's one of their security features. We run back over to the Washington Post article. You can see here, where it really starts to get hinky, and this is just the start of hinky. Apple's adoption of digital driver's licenses is a big deal when you consider how many people own iPhones. Also, Google has been working to build support for verifiable electronic IDs into Android and teamed up with Apple and others to define a technical standard on how IDs should work. Can we run over here to this apple.com? We can see Apple announces first states sign up to adopt driver's licenses and state IDs in Apple Wallet. So we have Arizona, Connecticut, Georgia, Iowa, Kentucky, Maryland, Oklahoma, and Utah. And Utah is the one to kick off all of this. So we'll primarily be focusing on them. They do seem to be the earliest mover in most of this. So in this, uh, Apple wants to go ahead and recruit your driver's license into the wallet. Makes sense. Why not? More tracking, more ability, more to see, more, 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 more information, more they can make off of you. Same with Google. Google lays out the privacy benefit, privacy benefits. When's the last time you could trust Google with a privacy anything? Them and Facebook, just go ahead and trust them with stuff. Google's, Google lays out the privacy benefits of electronic mobile driver's licenses on Android. And not only does Google want your driver's license, they take it one step farther and Google wants to standardize digital car key and ID support on Android. Now remember that, because we'll come back and we'll talk about that later where a government entity is then involved and noted. So if we run over and we look at Utah, which kicked all this off with that original photo, which we'll go back and visit at the end. Don't worry, we're coming back to it. So you can get your uh, MDL, mobile driver's license, also a MID, mobile ID, they call it sometimes. So there's a lot of inter interchangeable names for this. Uh, it says you can use it at a bank, grocery store, liquor store, car rental agencies, and many other locations in the months to come. So if we run down here and we take a look, there's actually only uh, about three types of entities you can use your Utah mobile driver's license with. So it's Harmon's, this neighborhood grocery store. I don't know. It looks like there might be two locations on this map, one here and one behind it. And then this credit union location, which are all of these green dots, and then each one of these purple dots are basically a DMV office or some sort of government location. So not a lot of benefit to this thing yet, even in Utah where they're pushing it really hard. So not a lot of rush. In looking around and digging through a lot of this, I ended up at the Utah Department of Public Safety. These guys are on board for this. 
new mobile driver's license to offer Utahns, Utahns, is that, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know, Utahns, enhanced privacy. So it basically runs through, uh, talks about selective data sharing. I found this really funny because in here it's like, oh, is the bouncer at the club being sketchy? You don't have to give them your ID and show your address and everything else. You can just kind of come over and show them your age verification. So we run back over here and we take a look. This is what I assume they're referring to. 18 plus check mark, 21 plus check mark. So you would show that to the bouncer so that you're safe because all of us have had bouncers follow you home. I don't know, break into your house. Is that really a thing and a big problem? I'm not, I've not heard about a lot of bouncers following people home or being sketchy. They're kind of the guys there to protect you, but that's whatever. So digging around in this website, it did send us to the mobile DL, which we visited a few times. We also run over here to medium.com. We can look and see, and this is where the Utah piece starts to come into play. If we think back, it had, or if we take a look at this photo here, it had vaccination status, social credit score, all of that. Now in the Utah public safety one, it highlights and it says that, you know, this is the only information that we will grab is just the same stuff that's on your driver's license. And in the same breath and in the same scope, these guys come over here, future methods of interaction. So this is the ISO, basically it's the rules and the guidelines, sort of if you've ever written an app or dealt with protocols at all in the computer world, this sort of defines for you what you can and can't do and what's in and not in it. So basically this is the ISO standard. The ISO uh, 18013-5 provides for namespace extensions to the data model to prevent regional additions to standardized data. Example, real ID across the USA. So basically they've pre-built in areas to record information for whatever they want. Vaccination status, social credit score, rinse and repeat anything on that list and anything over and above that you wanna put in. The standard has a space in it to begin to allow that type of stuff. It's just a matter of them writing it in and continue to refine the standard. So a lot of this is being pushed for by the, let me make sure I get the name exactly correct, the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators. So when we come over and we look at their page and we look at their mobile driver's license implementation, they provide us with a white paper that highlights sort of what they're trying to do, the goals, how to lay it out, some of the structure. And we dig into that. You can see it's the mobile driver's license functional needs white paper final. If we run down into section 3.9 on page 27, and I will link all of this down in the description. Feel free to dig through. There's way more here than we're gonna cover in this video. We're running through it kind of quick. I'm trying to keep it high level. Just enough to let you guys know that this is something you should keep an eye on and might wanna uh, let someone know about. Anyway, 3.9, a MDL can potentially be used for purposes other than conveying driving privileges. Everything from Utah was Oh, it's only about being convenient, providing ID and driving privileges. Now here we are in the actual white paper. For example, interaction between the MDL and a vehicle is possible. Think back to our Google wants to make it basically your digital key to start your car. Already this white paper by the Motor Vehicle Association is talking about doing that and this thing isn't even rolled out yet. Don't tell me that they don't have plans for this in the future and that what we saw in that picture isn't plausible. Like it's 100% plausible. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Another example would be to confirm eligibility for medical services. Did you, did, you, did you get one of these? This will tell people whether or not you did all in one spot. You don't think that they'll limit control access, TSA, et cetera, out of this with that? Come on now. And the namespace is already in the ISO to do this stuff. So it's not a lot of redesign here. They're planning this already and this is pre-designed. Other uses may evolve over time. Another one that I read in another article that cited this very similar, uh, your hunting permit, your fishing permit. So you're gonna have to show this game of fish, TSA, state police, DMV, go out to eat at a restaurant. This thing is going to control your life and dictate where and how you interact with the places that you go, what you can do there. Don't think that they won't know all of the other things and all of the other people in the areas that you go to. So 
let's run through the last couple pieces here. What states currently have MDL? So here's an implementation map. Little, there's a bunch of implementations all over the place. I thought this one was a good graphic to kind of show you guys. You can see that Utah's in pilot activities, Florida's in pilot activities, Virginia and Maryland and Delaware in pilot activities. Um, you know, Iowa and Oklahoma, Arizona kind of joining on board there. And we can see some of that if we run back over here to this Apple. You know, this is far and away the best place we can see where stuff's going on. You know, Arizona, Connecticut, Georgia, Iowa, Kentucky. A lot of the offenders we just talked about on this implementation map. And now, what you guys really want to know is where does Wyoming fall in this? Because everybody needs to live in Wyoming that uh, doesn't want to be controlled by everybody. So Wyoming, legislative study activity. The governor has signed an act creating Wyoming digital driver's licenses. Now, I did call the Wyoming Department of Motor Vehicles, and they... The nice lady I spoke to on the phone had no idea what I was talking about. I explained it to her, asked her if it was possible to get one. She said that would be not be coming to Wyoming for a very long time. And she encouraged me to come in and get a regular card because that was the only option that was available, which I found absolutely fantastic. I don't want any parts of this digital driver's license. This thing is going to be a nightmare. So while the photo that we saw from Utah doesn't, or Instagram about Utah, doesn't exactly highlight the reality of now. It is not far off and it, it would not be hard to implement those types of tracking information into this digital driver's license. It's easy to do once things, things built and rolled out, especially with the namespace already being reserved in the ISO, uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a really hard change and it's gonna be really, really easy to roll. Get ready to have to show your smartphone to get in just about anywhere. They're trying to get rid of the old driver's license. They're going to know where you're at, everything else. They're going to use it to track. I mean, not that the NSA is not using your phone to track you anyway. This is going to be a whole new level. So get ready to be controlled by this. Not great news. This thing sucks. Hold out as long as you can. Resist, resist, resist. I'll see you guys out there on the battlefield, and I'll catch you in the next one.